Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of a Deadly Linux Terminal Commands. Now I think it goes without saying that if you're going to try out anything called Deadly Terminal Commands that you should do so in a virtual machine, or at least not on your main system. So it's been a long time since I've done one of these videos, but there's some unfinished business from the older video about syncing a folder into dev null. So what I found is modern Linux will protect you from some of the more obvious deadly terminal commands that you'll read about, but everything in this video will be effective, although recoverable to a certain extent. Simply trying to move a folder into null causes the response cannot overwrite non-directory dev null with directory slash temp, and that doesn't matter if you're going to use dev zero or dev u random. But there is an alternative to this, and it's indirect because it takes a couple of lines. And what we'll do is remove the existing temp folder. So that's sudo rm r slash temp. And then I'll create a symbolic link to dev slash null, and we're going to call it temp, and it's going to be under the root folder. So for all intensive purposes, that will look like the temp folder. Although it won't be, <laughs> because it does show a symbolic link. But what is the effect of that on Ubuntu? Let's reboot and find out. So I'll need to press escape to drop into the terminal. So we get a lot of failures from system D. Now that's because system D stores a lot of the service or PID information in the slash temp folder. No ability to store service information uh, means no bootable system, at least not in terms of a desktop. It still continues to work in Ubuntu server. <laughs> that system's done for until you recreate a temp folder. Is it possible to crash the Linux kernel upon demand? Well, as it turns out, yes it is. Through the use of the magic system request key. That seemingly useless sysrq key. So there's commands you can pass to the systemrq. So this could actually be a key press combination, but we'll do it for the terminal instead. I'll demonstrate it with sig kill first, and then we'll use the system crash. Using Ubuntu server this time, now I have to elevate to root for this. Echo i and output to slash proc slash sysrq trigger. And that immediately sends a sig kill to all processes except init. So it closes everything except init, so we can still get back into the system. Well, it causes a system reboot in effect, but a rather lethal system reboot because uh, we've got an error here. And now to cause the kernel to crash, um, that is it. Uh, you see the cursor has stopped blinking, and I can't do anything with that virtual machine. It's um, stuck now until it's reboot. Send the shutdown signal. No, even that won't do it. It's gone. Power it off. The next one is more of an April Fool's gag, and I call it Enigma Terminal. So I'll open up .bashrc in a text editor, and we'll go right down to the end, and type in while true do echo trcd alnum slash dev slash u random fold dash w1 head dash n1 and then read dash rsn1 done. So that is going to output a random character every time a single key is pressed, and we're going to hide what key is pressed from the user. I'll save that and then close and reopen terminal, and, and what you'll notice is every time I press a key, something random appears on the screen. So I'm actually pressing the same key on the keyboard, and yeah, a different value is displayed. Yeah, it's not really deadly, because if I press Control c then it drops out of that script. But could fool someone. And it's every time you open a new terminal window, so yeah, you get the same thing over and over again. Oh, and you press enter as well, yeah, that doesn't do it either. <laughs> Has to be control C. And the last two commands really do affect Ubuntu rather than most of the other distros. That is because Ubuntu uses sudo and has no root user. The file slash etc slash sudoers gives you control of the users and groups that have access to the sudo command. But you can mess with that. So we have admin and sudo have access by default. But the command I'm going to run next messes with this and it inverts that. So it actually completely undermines the security on the system. But if you're the average Ubuntu user and have only one user, then you won't have access to sudo. And that is sudo said dash i and s forward slash percent forward slash percent colon forward slash g. And this is an inline edit of the slash etc slash sudoers file. If I just check that, oh, I need to elevate my rights to sudo. And we have quids is not in the sudoers file. This incident will be reported. Oops. 
And if I log out and log back in, I can't do anything with sudo. So it is possible to rectify that, but not easy. And the final command is going to be a little bit similar, but only affect the one user on the system. Rather than completely undermining the security, it just means no one has root access. So if I look in the slash etc slash group file, then you'll notice that I'm the average Ubuntu user here with one user with sudo writes. So let's remove them with sudo del user who am I sudo. Well, it helps if you type the command correctly. Yeah, it's sudo del user who am I sudo. So removing quids from group sudo, and we can confirm that with grep sudo, and there is no one in that group. So if I log out and log back in and try and do anything with sudo, well, I'm not in the sudo as file and the incident will be reported. Oh well, never mind. So yeah, again, that's recoverable, but not so straightforward. Well, that was the third part of the deadly Linux terminal commands. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.